Riddle, an animated story. Here's a question. Why didn't Voldemort use the Basilisk? You know that giant 50 foot snake? Yeah, why didn't he use it during the first Wizarding War? In the mid to late 70s, Lord Voldemort was really beginning to make a name for himself. He was gathering a mass amount of followers and the Wizarding community was under great threat. He had quite the army as a matter of fact and was very close to winning the war by 1980. Yet, despite the wide array of magical creatures at his disposal, we never seen the Basilisk. That's because he never used it. He left it in the Chamber of Secrets, despite its potential to inflict serious damage on his enemies. So what was happening with that situation? Why didn't Voldemort unleash the Basilisk on the Wizarding World? Has anyone also wondered why he never turned the Serpent into a Horcrux either? I'm going to look into that today and give you an answer. So let's not wait any longer and let's get right to it. So we first see the Basilisk during the Chamber of Secrets, when it was revealed that it was the monster of Slytherin who's lived beneath the school for close to a thousand years, moving through the pipes. Now it was released from the chamber twice. During Tom Riddle's time in the 40s, 1943 to be precise, where he used it to kill Myrtle Warren and create his first Horcrux, and then 50 years later when it began petrifying the students of Hogwarts. Now, the Basilisk was a terrifying creature, I mean utterly frightening. Basilisks could live to be over 1000 years old and possibly even longer. They grew from 50 to 100 feet in length and had toxic, corrosive venom that killed in seconds and had hard, armoured scales that were also spell resistant. They were literally the perfect weapon. It's no wonder the Ministry of Magic had them rated 5x, the most dangerous hazard rating. The issue with the Basilisk is, nobody had seen one in centuries, if not millennia. The reason they were not bred is because they were impossible to control without the use of parcel tongue. And since that language is inherited and so few people spoke it, the Basilisk would take no direction and with its most deadly attack, the Killing Glare, it was basically a machine made for death. There's just no other more fitting explanation. The creature is a product of dark magic and is relatively simple to hatch. You simply place a chicken egg under a toad, so their lack of existence isn't for a lack of trying. Now it's pretty obvious that the Basilisk has devastating abilities, yet the first we've seen of it was the Chamber of Secrets. Okay, technically, the story truly begins with the Philosopher's Stone, but let's not forget that there was a before Harry time period where Voldemort was literally on a rampage. The Dark Wizard had become so powerful that even the great Albus Dumbledore himself knew it was only a matter of time before the Order of the Phoenix would be overpowered and overrun. In order to get to the position he was now in, which is basically approaching victory, the Dark Lord submerged himself in the Dark Arts for years. He explored every aspect that could be beneficial to him becoming undefeatable. It was only when he gained such strength did he begin his pursuit for world dominance. Now Voldemort had a lot of support, hundreds of witches and wizards all joined his cause. He had the support of the pure-blooded families, he had financial backing if he needed, he had his death eaters, his inner circle and he had immortality. But despite all of that, if he was going to start a war, he needed numbers. The Dark Lord needed more than people, he needed creatures, half-breeds, giants. There was no being that Voldemort would not accept assistance from. He did so by offering these creatures deals. Take the werewolves for example. No longer would they have to hide in the new world, the new establishment. The mentors could feed on as many souls as they wished. The giants needed no longer be relegated into the hills and mountains. Voldemort had amassed an army that was intimidating at the very least. 
he needed to ensure that he was an unbeatable force. Yet despite his recruits, there was no sign of the basilisk, the giant snake that kills people by just looking at them. It's not as if he hadn't had any experience with it. He had. He used the creature to kill. It obeyed only him. It listened to only him. So the first thing that came to mind was, would the basilisk do more harm than good? Not to the opposing forces, but to his own, as simply looking into the creature's eyes warranted death. Yet Tom Riddle looked at the basilisk. He controlled the basilisk, gave it orders, which makes me wonder, was the creature's glare controllable too? Could it simply switch it off? Even Salazar Slytherin would have had some eye contact with the creature at one point. Or am I the only one who's thought of that situation? In addition to that, as the sheer presence of the serpent towering 50 feet into the air with huge venomous fangs ready to pierce its victims, I'm not going to lie guys, it would make me run for the hills. Sorry Harry, good luck with the horcruxes, I'm going home. The basilisk could easily lead the line too, as it was spell resistant. Imagine trying to stop this beast coming at you, yet none of your spells work. Not me, I already left the battlefield the second I seen it. Anyway, enough jokes, the point I'm making is, seeing a creature that was looked upon as a myth would have solidified Voldemort's presence even further, as this whole campaign was nothing any of these people had ever seen. Not even Gellert Grindelwald had such an arsenal at his disposal. Now, I know I've painted the Basilisk as indestructible, and honestly, it's not too far off. But the creature is not indestructible. It's still flesh and bone. Harry pierced its skull with the Sword of Gryffindor, meaning it's still susceptible to injury and death. So with the serpent being the last living creation of the great and noble Salazar Slytherin, Voldemort may not have wanted to risk any harm coming to his ancestor's final contribution. It's one of those situations where we know Voldemort doesn't care about anything but himself. But does he actually care about preserving his ancestor's legacy? Kind of a weird one, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he did care. Even saying that sounds strange. So that's why Voldemort didn't release the Basilisk during the First Wizarding War, despite it being so useful and potentially even more useful. It would have been the perfect Horcrux if you ask me. For starters, the Basilisk would have been protected by the dark magic of the Horcrux, making it even stronger. But at that point, remember this is the 80s, despite Voldemort being at the height of his power, he still had no idea of the effects of using a live animal as a horcrux. Did the animal now become immortal if it contained his soul, or could it still die? What happens if it does die? There's so many questions that lead to so many uncertainties. It also would have been really difficult to create the Horcrux after his graduation, as it's not exactly so easy to sneak back into the school. The only reason he got to hide the diadem of Ravenclaw in the Room of Requirement was because he announced his return to Dumbledore in the hope of securing a teaching job. Creating a Horcrux requires a number of foul rituals. These rituals crucially may take time. Voldemort might have needed to spend days or possibly weeks in the chamber in order to turn a basilisk into a horcrux. Dumbledore might have noticed him showing up weeks later looking even worse and conclude what he had been doing. He might even have learned the location of the chamber and thus both the basilisk and Voldemort's horcrux. Certainly, Dumbledore would have noted that he had not returned to his friends and concluded he was still in the castle. What's even more difficult is the murder. Voldemort would have needed to commit the murder in close proximity to the basilisk. I can't imagine him dragging someone down to the Chamber of Secrets just to kill them and then perform the Horcrux ritual. It seems like too much of a risk for him. Personally, I believe he never had any intention of making a living thing into a Horcrux. It was only through such a close connection to Nagini did his mind change. I genuinely wish there was more information on Horcruxes. I feel there's just so much more information JK Rowling could release from Harry Potter. So many things left unexplained, but a decade later, our cries have still gone unanswered. Anyway guys, what do you all think? Why did Voldemort leave the Basilisk in the chamber? Why didn't he turn it into a Horcrux? Let me know in the comment section below. I want to know your take. I want to know your opinion. 
Also in the month of July there will be a lot of updates on Riddle and Animated Story. I will be on camera having a discussion about the upcoming trailer and I will be showing off some artwork from the series too. The official trailer for Riddle and Animated Story will be released in July. So the month of July is a big month for me and this channel. So thanks again everyone, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever. So please, if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at instadnj and on Twitter at potterfolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.